Uh, I'm Jez, uh, one of the founders of Funfair. The other two founders are up there, uh, Jeremy and Ollie. So Funfair is uh, a gaming technology uh, aimed uh, at the uh, casino gaming market. Um, we, we are building in our London office uh, the uh, state channel technology as well as uh, gaming technology and front end and everything else to disrupt the gaming industry. So, oops, we've got sound coming out of there. Oh, cool. Um, so, we are using uh, advanced state channels or uh, uh, Turing complete state channels uh, to get performance and, and gas efficiency. Uh, the, the goal of this is to make the games fair for players and also lower the costs for casino operators. Uh, it's got a robust uh, cheat detection. Uh, using um, a dispute management inside the state channels. Uh, we've created a marketplace for games, so uh, there's like an app store that uh, will allow game developers to put their games in the store, which casino operators can then uh, choose to publish. Uh, we have a history of um, developing computer games and online gaming. Uh, my history goes back um, very far. Uh, so uh, some of the early games I built, I don't know if anyone was alive and playing games in the 80s, but I did a game called Star Glider, which was um, quite successful in the 80s. Um, my team did Star Fox, which you might have played on the Nintendo, the original yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, we designed the first 3D graphics chip uh, for games, which was the Super FX chip for Nintendo. So, so we have a history in computer games and in online gaming. So. This is very, it's very small, isn't it? Um, our mission is to um, make games fair and fully transparent. Uh, we, uh, we, have the, uh, we have the tech to make sure that neither side can cheat. Both the player and the casino operator are untrusted parties. Um, and we call our state channels fake channels, uh, which if you don't like that pun, you can blame Jeremy. But, um, but everyone gets to call their state channel something. I mean, Lightning, Plasma, Raiden, whatever, uh, Counterfactual. Everyone has a cool name, so why can't we? I'm actually going to skip the slides at this point and go straight to a demo, because I think you don't want to see slides. Um, so if that's the loudest that goes, maybe we'll use my sound. No, nope, I have no control over my sound. Is there volume on this tiny little thing? <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, what? oh can we do volume on that? Does it go any louder or is that? No. no. Oh. I guess, I guess we can try. <laughs> All right, never mind. All right. Okay. What I'm about to show you um, is actually live. You can play it today. Uh, we have had. Um, oh, there you go. A bit more volume. So just to show you what happens when you run, when, when you arrive, uh, this is the dev site, which has got a couple of extra games on it, but the public site is called showcase.funfair.io, and you can run it on any Web3 browser today. So we have a, a lobby, which is a graphical front end that lets you scroll through in 3D any games that are on the, um, that have been published. And we can see them in different ways. We could see them in like a grid and choose, or we could have them in 3D or in a list or whatever. So I'm going to show you Roulette, for instance. So all of this is running uh, as web apps. Uh, they're dApps. They are. Um, OK, so here you see the wallet, which is the interface that brings money into the game. And this is effectively opening the state channel. So if I bring in 10,000 test fun into the game, up pops the MetaMask um, pop up. I click confirm. Now we're just waiting for the transaction to confirm. And now the channel's open. So from now on, anything I do is real time. So I can play this game, I can make some bets, I can do whatever you do on roulette. Uh, and then click spin. I'm not quite sure. What's that delay for? There we go, doing live demo is always very dangerous. Okay. 
I think that was a, uh, we're using my, the internet on my phone, so I think that was our delay. So we can literally play in real time. There's, we're not waiting for the blockchain. Um, we're, um, we, we can play as often or as many games as we want. And then when we're done and we, and we want to go home or, or quit, we can just click cash out, this button here. And that's it. And you can quit the game and do whatever you want. So what it's done, and they're the, um, I think we lost. So to show you another game. So what's happening behind the scenes is when you sit down at a game, we're opening a state channel. We're, we're actually seeding the random number generator because this technology um, does a, a very good real-time, uh, provably fair random number generation for all the games. Um, and it also does all the micropayments. And it also executes all the smart contracts off-chain. So it's doing quite a lot. Um, Let's just show you a completely different game. Actually, I'll show you it locally, just so that we're not worried about. Well, I, sh I should show the better game, shouldn't I? The, the new one. I should. I'm going to show. You, I'm going to show you something you can't see on the um, on the showcase. So this this is a, like a, a simple pirates slot machine. It was actually one of the first that we built more than a year ago. Um, now I'm going to show you something that isn't public. So which one's that? That's the Egyptian. This is an Egyptian-themed slot machine that we're building, which hasn't got a name yet. Feel free to contribute one. <laughs> Something of Ra or whatever. <laughs> so all of these games are of the standard that they have to be to compete in the marketplace, and yet all of them will run on the blockchain without any gaming servers. So that's the main difference. Uh, in a second, I'll go back to the slides and tell you more about the tech. Okay, let's go back to slides. Oh, we won something. And where's my keynote? There we go. So, thank you, thank you. There's, there's about 12 games you can play, so go have fun. Uh, so the fake channels, uh, a bit more about how they work. So uh, it's a node-based architecture. Uh, in our case, each casino operator is a node, and there can be as many casino operators as we manage to find. So this hopefully one day is hundreds or thousands of casino operators. This year will probably be single-digit numbers. Each, um, uh, so that the fake channels do uh, provably fair random numbers, and talk to Jeremy if you want the technical details, uh, but they do it by combining the entropy of the player uh, and the casino, uh, come together, are committed in advance. As part of the state channel opening, the seed is committed onto the blockchain before the games are played, and then the, the server passes the game real-time, new random numbers as the game needs them without waiting for the chain, and then when the games are, are finished and the channel closes, it proves that the uh, committed seed uh, is revealed and proves that every round of number you were given was actually from the same sequence uh, in order and, and was provably fair. So as mentioned, this is a general purpose state channel. So we're, we're actually executing the smart contracts off chain um, in a similar way, but different than uh, counterfactual. Uh, so this is doing, it's a lot more flexible than, um, than the payments only um, state channels. Um, this lets us do provably fair games uh, because the, the smart contracts uh, exist on the chain for the games. So uh, all of the game's logic and outcomes are existing on the chain and people could look at it and follow it and see that it's provably fair. So the whole point about this is that an educated player or user could look at the chain, see what's happening, or could look at the games, see that the smart contracts exist, pre-existed, and that they're doing what they're supposed to do, and that you're supposed to, when you, when you should have won, you will win, you will get paid. Um, each node supports hundreds of players simultaneously, which is thousands of transactions, um, and you can have as many nodes as you want, um, as many casino operators. Uh, we call this a pure engineering solution in that um, this is not research-based, we haven't got any complex math in the state channels, it's a pure engineering solution to deliver working state channels 
uh, which ultimately lets us deliver real-time games for money on the blockchain today. We're not waiting for anything to come. We're not waiting for anyone else. Uh, we're not waiting for a next version of Ethereum. This runs today perfectly well. Uh, we're going beta on the main net in weeks. We're not going to say exactly how many weeks, but hopefully single-digit weeks away. Uh, so that means we're going to be one of the first, possibly the first, but certainly one of the first state channel products to go live. Um, so I think I probably mentioned that stuff. Um, the, our state channels are two-way. They're, they're person to casino. Um, they could be potentially head-to-head. Um, -head. Um, and the games run in any Web3 enabled browser, including mobile. So they, they run great on Cypher browser. And if Toshi and Status get their act together, it'll run on those two. Um, so just to compare, I know everyone's asking what's the difference between all the different state channel solutions that there are available. I've tried to like summarize. Wow, you, you really can't read that. OK. Um, I tried to summarize some of the obvious differences between um, the fate channel technology and um, other, fate, other, other payment channels. So one is it's a full general purpose state channel that um, can do any state, not just payments. Um, it's built to do random numbers built in. Um, it is also, uh, it does payments, obviously, is required bets and wins back and forth between the player and the house are all real time. Um, in our case, the channel is only open while you're playing the game. So we actually, we like short-lived channels. I know it's different than the other solutions, but we're not sure yet. Until, until state channels are um, very popular and until wallets are built that support them and until the infrastructure is built around them, we're not sure that people want to leave money in channels for very long. So our channels are built to last only the duration of the game. So open it when you get in the game, close it when you get out of the game. And so it means that the player gets their money back immediately and they're not leaving it lying around anywhere. Uh, one day, when, when the infrastructure can support channels properly, maybe people won't mind leaving money in channels for long periods of time. But we, we think the behavior today is going to be that people don't want to leave money uh, lying around. Uh, it's a single hop architecture. We're not trying to do any routing. Um, personally, I, I'm not sure that routing is going to work until there's a high density of users um, that have left funds in the channel so that it can route through people that um, don't know each other. So I think that uh, it's kind of a binary outcome for, um, for you know, multi-hop routing is that you really need density before it's useful, uh, whereas a single hop solution works today immediately. A player plays directly with the casino. Uh, there's no intermediate channels or, or hubs or anything needed. Um, uh, and in our case, the, um, when the player sits down at the table and brings some money, like say 100 fun to the table, uh, the casino brings a lot more into the table. So that the two are escrowed, the player's funds and the casino's funds are escrowed together inside the game contract so that the player could win something. So the casino has to put up a lot more fun tokens than the player's got to make sure there's something to win. Obviously, at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, session when the, when the channel is closed, everyone gets their money back or, or uh, settled correctly. Um, we've gone out of our way to make sure that no one can cheat. So th this is all about uh, detecting cheating and um, dispute resolution. And so we're very uh, confident that when we're done, uh, that neither the player nor the casino can cheat. Uh, and it's very important that uh, it can run because we're actually not the casino. We're the tech supplier to the casino industry. So we, we want to make sure that everyone is untrusted, including the game developer and the games, and that everything can work correctly together. Um, we're trying to compare it to Plasma, and actually I learned more about Plasma today, so uh, apologies. But I think one of the main differences is that um, Plasma is quite slow to have a dispute resolution and get your funds back. So it's not expected to be like a real-time dip in, dip out like we built. Um, and we still don't know what the security issues are in, in using Plasma for detecting cheating and enforcing game rules, which is something that our state channel technology does very well. Uh, so as mentioned, we keep our channels open um, for only the, the game session duration, and we do dispute resolution hopefully in hours or minutes or hours, not um, days, weeks, or however long the other guys um, have chosen. Um, 
Yes, again, I learned more about counterfactual today, so I'm not sure uh, exactly the difference. But one of the main differences is that we publish the contracts on chain because at the a real world smart contract that does something genuinely useful like a game is actually um, not just a few lines of code and not just a few thousand uh, gas, it's actually millions of gas. And to publish the contract on chain um, is a very expensive operation and so we only do it once. Once the game is published it's there and then anyone can use it. So uh, in, in the counterfactual I think they're um, planning that the two parties can um, assume that the contract exists even when it doesn't and do their transactions between each other and the contract only needs to be published on chain when there's a dispute which does l defer to a future time the deployment of the contract which means there's a cost involved and in our games the cost is quite high I mean in, because these are real applications they're not just test applications they actually do a lot of stuff and so they do consume a lot of gas um, we're not currently doing context switching, we might in the future, which is being able to change games while the channel is still open. So currently we open channel, play game for as long as you want, multiple hands of the game, then close channel, the game's done. And then if you want to play a different game, we open the channel again, and, and so on. Which is different than counterfactual, which leaves the channel open. Um, games are built in two parts. Uh, the, the, the pretty part is the DAP which uh, has the graphics and the, and the uh, GUI and the audio and the gameplay. Uh, and then there's the smart contract, which is the back end, which is the outcomes, the logic, the, the, um, the, the actual code. Um, we're unusual in that we only use um, the on-chain smart contract. Um, so we use that. So everything, the client, the fake channel, and the blockchain, they only have one knowledge of the game, which is the smart contract. That is like the, the master uh, game. That's actually the rules of the game. It only appears once. It's not replicated in the DAP as well. So what this means is that this, this allows us to execute it off-chain, but it also means there's only, like, there's only one um, decision that needs to be made, which is great for dispute resolution, because if anyone tries to cheat, um, we can just push uh, the dispute to the main chain and let it get let the main chain actually resolve the dispute. Um, in our case, we whitelist the, uh, the games because fairness is more than just the smart contract executing correctly. Fairness is what the game looks like, how it depicts your position, uh, you know, how it shows you the cards, how it, how it shows you your win. So there's a lot more to fairness than just code. So we have a whitelisting authority that uh, when game developers build games, they'll submit them, we'll test them, make sure they're fair, and then we'll whitelist them, and then they can put them in the, uh, in the DAP store. Um, at some future time, we'll delegate the, the whitelisting authority to the marketplace or to, um, to some kind of foundation or authority. We don't want to be doing it. It's just it has to be done. Someone has to do it. So in terms of scaling and capacity, um, it's potentially infinitely scalable in that uh, it's node-based, and you can have as many nodes as you want. Um, it's similar in a way to sharding in multiplayer games and perhaps sharding in, in even Ethereum in that um, each node has its own set of players. So each casino would have their own set of players, uh, which means, and they can all run um, at the same time, although typically they wouldn't. Um, the, the, in terms of real hard limits, the blockchain currently has 8 million gas per block, which would limit how many players could open a channel at any one time. Uh, which is approximately 100 players a minute could start a session, but obviously they can play as many games as they want. Um, and sessions can last hundreds or thousands of games. So we're putting out an API and sample source code, how to build games, how to, um, how to build the smart contracts, and working examples of that. We're putting that out in weeks. Um, and as you saw, the system is fully functional already. We've built the front end, the back end, um, the, the APIs, uh, the tech, everything is working uh, on the test network, and we go on the main network uh, in weeks. Uh, we, we've been saying Q2, but obviously that is actually only weeks away. Um, and any questions? Oh, sorry, go ahead.
sorry, the, the question is, we have the code. Yes. Uh, okay, CTO Jeremy coming up. Um, I think the answer is probably no limit as long as you write the smart contracts in the right way. So the question was, if the game contract is deployed um, on the network, even if we're executing it off-chain, we need to execute it on-chain for dispute resolution. The question is, what is the limit of the complexity of the game? And it is, in fact, what you can execute in a single transaction on, an e on the Ethereum network. Um, and obviously, that's quite expensive. So you want to be doing that as, limit as, as much as, as infrequently as possible or optimizing your code. So, so it is definitely a limit of the system as it stands right now. But in the, at least in the short term, we believe the kind of cleanliness of the, having the, the uh, there being an, not only an authoritative source of the game rules, but an authoritative source of the code that implements the game rules being on chain is a quite clean, nice way of, of thank you, Jess, um, of um, of handling have handling that situation. And it, it's it's um, it's <laughs> okay, fine. Anyway, it, it, we, we like it for now. Um, clearly, it has limitations, and if we wanted to do the world's most complicated game, we'd have to do it in a different way. Conceivably, you could be it could be done in some sort of multi on multi-state, multi-state, you know, multi-transaction way, but that's not how we're building it right now. Yeah, no, we're, we're, I mean, we've got, um, we've got a, we're not doing poker poker. Um, but we've got a we've got a video poker that at least does a hand analysis and can tell you if you've got well yeah. it's not on chain on there but yeah 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 no yeah yeah I, I mean I, I think I, I mean I think we're doing I think the whole point of this is we're doing what we can do with what's available now you know and um, you know what the counterfactual guys are doing you know could be fantastic but it's not here today so. Any other questions while I'm here? Uh, right at the back. Yeah, so how, how do game developers make money? Well, so we've built, so we've got our state channels, which is the pure side of, of this, but we can do extra stuff in the open channel and the closed channel. So actually, in this case, the game developers have paid a revenue share, right, of the, the money that the operator will make. In general, the operator should be making money, right? It's an unfair relationship between the the punter and the casino, it, 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 it still always is, right? It doesn't seem to stop people from doing it. So in the closed channel, right, we've, when we've opened the channel, we've declared on chain what the game contract that's gonna be used is, uh, include, and the stakes that people are gonna play and the random number seats. So that's actually on chain. Well, the hash of it is on chain. And so in the closed channel, we know that this game contract was used for that session. And so we pay a percentage of the tokens that the operator would win to the, game con to the game contract or whoever they delegated to. So it's done at the end of the session and automatically. So there's no, so for game developers and other third party suppliers like you get affiliates and various other people in the mix, they're paid by the smart, con smart contract at the closed channel state. They don't have to trust some company in their reporting systems claiming how much money they should have made. It's all paid automatically in the ecosystem. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, take care.